very rapidly and the problem is what the excessive cutting down of trees we've come to the realization that annually over millions of trees are cut down just for what wood poor and a series of change business in high school will come out with an alternative poor which will which is what the recycling of what, agricultural waste products into an eco-friendly chapel and as you can see behind us, this is good for people. And if you are able to do the calculation well, the number of trees, trees that will be cut down annually will be very well great. And this causes what? Um, climate change to our environment. And this climate change also increases the amount of carbon dioxide concentration that are So, <laughs> the alternative charcoal, our brother Charles will take us through the process now. Okay, so we are moving on to our pantry where they use this uh, wood to cook and we are going to show you some of the effects which the women go through. So let's move to the pantry and we will show you what is happening there. What's up? What do you bonga? Tell him bonga. So welcome back. This is our pantry which we are talking about and all the our kitchen, sorry. All the wood we saw over there, this is where it's being processed through the, what they're cooking. And we are going to ask some of the women here who cook to tell us what they go through in using this wood for the wood we are talking about. Okay, um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, please, we want to just find out something little from you. In using the wood for what are some of the effects that you go through? Effects affecting the the our other Okay. What our mother is trying to say is that indoor air pollution causes uh, um, chest disease, cardiovascular diseases, it causes even eye pain, skin disease. So there's something they're not doing to indoor air pollution. That most of their plus most of their quality due to indoor pollution. So some of them are also saying that when they go to hospital for checkup, they say they smoke because the smoke has piled up in their lungs, which is causing them what um, lung cancer and all that. So they are actually going through a lot. That is why we are coming up with what with an alternative of what driving a means of clean and affordable what fuel instead of using firewood. And they are appealing that if anybody can come to their aid, they will really appreciate it. So we are going to go through the processes of our charcoal briquetting and let you know what and what we use to do our briquette. We actually use agricultural waste. So we are going back to our dining hall to take you through the processes involved. <laughs> So this is our dining hall which we are talking about and here we are going to show you the production processes involved. We actually have three stages. Stage one is the charring of our water, agricultural waste. The next stage is to go through the stage of mixing with our starch. We use cassava starch and after that we compress it then we dry. So we have our drum here which is our inner chamber and then we have a an outer chamber here which we are going to pour our waste inside and then put it inside the inner chamber so we are going to pour our agricultural waste this is rice husk you can see it's, it's purely rice husk so we'll put it inside here They are post perforated on it it's just to allow controlled amount of oxygen to go inside and then so we are going to lift it for 
Kawaii test. Yeah, that's true. So Kawaii test. And then we put it inside a bigger one. <laughs> so this is going to serve as a catalyst. We'll pour it inside and set fire on it. So we are going to set fire <coughs> just to ensure that our product is being charged the way we want it and we are controlling the amount of heat that is going to be inside if not we're trying to obtain char will come and obtain ash so we are going to control the amount of heat So we'll allow our fire to burn for some time, then after that we'll cover it with a chimney. Just to control the smoke that is coming out. So you wouldn't like the smoke to go out? Yes. And what would be the use of the smoke? The smoke, we are going to retain it inside the container and that's what is going to meet up with the oxygen which is going to come from these perforated holes inside to charge the product that we kept inside there. Chamber. Okay. So we are going to cover <laughs> and this process takes a maximum of five hours. So as we are covering, we are going to cover it and leave it for the process to take. So it's burning, you can feel the hotness from here. So you see that the smoke is no more coming out. It's being retained inside the container. And as it's retained, it will start moving downwards. And as it's moving downwards, the holes, there are holes all around. The oxygen will go inside and they meet up with the smoke and then it will burn and char the rice husk inside. So we are going to leave this for a maximum of five hours, then come back and obtain our char, which we are going to use for the next stage, which is the mixing. Actually, this place is hot. Yes. The heat is going down. Yeah, it's not hot. So it's coming up from top because we are burning from the top. Uh -huh. So that it will meet up with the oxygen. Touch it and see. So you can touch it and feel it. You see that it's, it's getting hot. As time goes on. It's terrible. But you can touch it down, you feel no hotness there. And you feel it. So the burning is taking effect from here and going down. So our five hours is due and then we want to open to see whether our project our product is being charged the way we want it. But I think it's very hot. So I'm going to use this to try to open it. So let's open up the top. It's still very hot. Now so we have our char inside and then you can see from this 
inside there. Okay, if you can, if you can remove it. If you can remove that thing, just remove it. Now you see. Hey, don't go. So, we have our fine char. We still have, we have our char inside here. You can see it is very char, well charred. If we had allowed it to continue for maybe up to six hours, we would come back and it's ash. But we've been able to estimate the hours that it's, it's going to use to char. And this is it. So we are going to the next process, which is what? We are going to mix it. You see that it's, it's, it's scattered. We have to mix it together so that it becomes what? Uh, fabricated for easy compacting. So we are going to add our starch, which is our cassava starch. To mix it and then we'll be able to uh, to compact it. So that's the next stage we are going to go through. So I'll take you to that stage too, then we'll see what happens there. Okay. Which this you are watching here, that's our starch. And that's cassava starch. And we are going to mix it with our char, which we obtained from the process of decarbonization. So Paul is going to do that. He's going to mix the starch with the char. After this process, we are now going to compact it and we are going to use a locally made machine which you can see here. It's not manual, it's actually connected to a source of power which you can see over there. It's not manual. So when they finish, we are going to pour the product inside here and then we will start our machine and it's going to compact it into the shape that we want our breaker to look like. So, this is now our mixture. Okay. Maybe you can take
Actually, it doesn't smoke. It doesn't produce smoke. I like the wood that we saw. 